صلی اللہ رسول کریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرخ لی سودری و یسر لی امری واحل العقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی وجعن لی وزیر من اہلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہو سورة النساء ورس 102 وَإِذَا قُمْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ السَّلَاةَ فَلْتَقُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ مَعَقَ وَلْيَأْقُزُوا أَسْلِحَتَهُمْ And when you are among them and lead them in the prayer Let a group of them stand in the prayer with you and let them carry their arms. And when they have prostrated, let them be in position behind you and have the other group come forward which has not yet prayed and let them pray with you, taking precaution and carrying their arms. Those who disbelieve wish that you would neglect your weapons and your baggage so they could come down upon you in one single attack. But there is no blame upon you if you are troubled by the rain or you are ill for putting down your arms but take precautions. Indeed, Allah has prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment. In verse 102, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning the procedure and the optional steps to be adopted when prayer or the congregational salah is being offered during the fear of attack of the enemy or during the conditions of war or in the active battlefield. Here in Quran, one method of uh, altering the whole procedure of the congregational salah has been suggested as we've uh, gone through the translation. But in Hadith, Prophet ﷺ has mentioned and explained like almost about four different methods. There is absolutely no doubt that Hadith and Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ extensively elaborates and help us all to learn and comprehend the verses and the message which has been conveyed and the commandments which have been conveyed by the Quran. Now the basic method we actually what we are the basic message and the important lesson which we are basically learning from this verse is the importance of Salah. The importance of Salah is that even in the condition, even in such a condition that even in the battlefield, when there is the risk of an impending attack, there is threat and fear from the enemy. Under such difficult conditions and under such a condition and state of fear, an imminent war or active war, Neither the Salah is omitted, nor is the time altered, and nor is the congregational prayer omitted and skipped. So from here, we can clearly relate the importance of these three things in the life of a believer. In all conditions, wherever, whenever, whatever he is in, there is no skipping of Salah, there is no omitting of congregational prayers, and there is no shifting of the time of Salah. Little do people realize, you know, how with all the health and all the facilities and amenities, with the best of comforts and luxuries, just sitting sitting free in front of our LED screens, 
following some drama serials or just watching a match does the time of salah pass away congregational salah are just not offered today with the most comfortable of air conditioned cars and air conditioned mosques with carpets and with underlays under the carpets with all the comforts and luxuries amenities and facilities available for salah in the mosque there is just no concept of congregational salah in the ummah of today and that is why i am going to talk in detail about salah today the importance of salah in the life of a believer how obligatory salah is what are the merits and what are the excellences of the people who who actually establish salah what is the excellence of offering congregational salah in the mosque how salah teaches us and trains us to be a muslim and how each and every step of salah is going to bring rewards and blessings of allah and how salah is going to help us not only in this world it's going to help us in each and every step and stage in the life here after salah is obligatory for all muslims and all believers the order of salah comes 700 times in quran it is the deed amongst all the deeds this is the deed which has been most ordered off in quran 700 times does allah talk about aqimu salata and aqimu salata and atu zakata both together offering of zakat and paying uh, offering of salah and paying of zakat is mentioned 70 times in quran salah was made obligatory during the stay in makkah and initially there were two prayers one in the morning and one in the evening and after the night of a session 12 years after the prophethood of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam during the month of ramadan in the night of a session were the five prayers made obligatory Hazrat Aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari in Muslim that Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how prayers were enjoined she transmits that when Allah enjoined the prayer during the night of the session he enjoined it in the form of two rakat both in residency and in journey but then after migration to Medina then people were then then the prayer remained the same that is two rakat for the travel or for the journey but then they were increased for the condition of residence prayer is the second important pillar of islam hazrat abdullah bin umar radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said buni al islam ala khamsin the pillar of islam are five there are five basic pillars of islam and you know very clearly that until and unless there are pillars the building cannot be constructed and if a building is constructed without the supporting walls or without the supporting erected pillars the building even if it it is constructed it will be very clumsy it will be very weak and just in one blow it just fall down it will crumble down so to to build our building of islam muslim needs to have these five pillars and the pillars are buni al islam ala khamsin shahadatan an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu wa iqami salati wa ita az zakati wal hajj wa sawm ramazan to witness and to admit that there is no god but allah and that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and his messenger to offer prayer to pray zakat to perform hajj 
and to fast in the month of Ramazan. So remember, without the pillar of Salah, Deen, Faith, Belief, our religion will not be complete, will not be constructed. And once we have not constructed and erected the building of Islam, we have no right to wait and to expect for a house or a palace or a building in Jannah. For Prophet ﷺ has clearly announced, Salah as Miftahul Jannah, Salah is the key to paradise. And we all know very clearly that if we do not have the key to any door, we will not be able to open and enter into the room. Like if we don't have the key to our front door, <coughs> if we don't have the key to our main door or the main gate, despite the fact the house is our own house and despite the fact that we live there, if we don't happen to have the key to the main gate or to the main door, we will not be able to enter our own house. So Salah is the key to Jannah. And nobody who hasn't prepared this key of Salah will be permitted or allowed to enter Jannah. That is why Prophet Sallallahu said, Ju'ilat qurrat a'ini fi salat that the coolness of my eyes has been has been placed in Salah. And remember the first question on the day of judgment when people will be asked and will be inquired and they will be held accountable for the rights of Allah. The first question about the right of Allah will be about Salah. Salah it's so very important that without Salah, a person cannot be a believer. Hazrat Jabir who narrates in Muslim, the Prophet said, Bain al abdi wa bain al kufri tarku salah. That between a believer and a disbeliever, there is only the giving up of prayers. Only the giving up of prayers. A person who is who is offering Salah is a believer and a person who is not offering Salah according to the words of this hadith is a non-believer. Hazrat Buraida radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Mustad Ahmad Tarimzi Nisai and Ibn Majah that Prophet sallallahu said, the covenant between me and these people is that of prayer. That is Prophet sallallahu said that I take the pledge of prayer from everybody who is the follower of the Prophet ﷺ. The covenant between me and these people is that of prayer. That whoever gives it up, that is turns it aside from the course of Islam, takes to disbelief. So the person who gives up Salah in his life is thus a disbeliever. Then Prophet ﷺ said, Hazrat Ubaidah bin Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, فَمَنْ تَرَقَهَا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَقَدْ خَرَجَ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ Whoever intentionally, knowingly, intentionally neglects prayers goes out of my fold. How, how very important it is to understand in the above saying, Prophet Sallallahu has announced to that any person who is deliberately, knowingly, deliberately, intentionally omitting Salah will be characterized as an infertility. The person will be categorized as an infertility and will be aggressed from the Muslim Ummah. This is what we all need to realize from the core of our heart. And Salah is by all means the deed which is the most beloved to Allah. This is the deed which is most pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Hazrat Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet was asked, Ayyul amalu ahabu ilallah. Which deed among all the religious deeds is the most 
pleasing to Allah. Prophet Sallallahu said, As-salatu li waqtiha. Birrul walidain. Al-jihadu fi sabilillah. The first thing is to offer the prayer at the right time. The second is to be to serve one's parents. And the third is to do jihad in the path of Allah. So this is a deed which causes the player of Allah to the most. And this is a beloved act for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the person who finds it difficult to offer salah or who, who offers salah in a lazy manner then is no longer a believer. He turns out as a hypocrite in the sight of Allah. We will be going through this verse in Surah An-Nisa, inshallah, very really soon, where Allah says, Allah says, is highlighting the properties and the behaviors of the hypocrites, the munafiqeen in Medina. And Allah says, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا kusala." That when they get up, when they straight up for offering salah, they come very lazily. لَا يَذْقَرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا that they don't mention, they don't remember Allah a lot during their salah. So a person who is not remembering Allah, who's thinking about so many things around himself in the world, and who is feeling it or finding it hard, finding it difficult to offer salah, and comes lazily towards salah, is whom he is a hypocrite in the sight of Allah. Similarly, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet Sallallahu said, For a hypocrite, no prayer is more tiresome than the prayers of Fajr and Isha. And if they realize how magnanimous the reward of these two prayers is, they would come to attend even crawling on their knees. And then Prophet Sallallahu said, I intend to order the proclaimer for prayer to proclaim and another man to lead the congregation and I myself with the flame of burning fire, with the flame of burning fire, burn the houses of all those who do not come to the mosque for prayer even after they have heard the proclamation or the azan. And in other words, in Muslim Prophet had said that if I had not fared for the children, for the women, or for the sick people, I would have burned their houses. So this is the importance of salah. And this is the importance of congregational salah for men. Prophet Sallallahu word has a Jabir Ruziallahu Ta'ala who narrates in Muslim that what lies between a man and infidelity is abandoning of prayer. What lies between a man and infidelity is the abandonment of prayers. And what happens to a person who leaves a salah, like the salah of Asr, as Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet said, if it, anyone abandons the Asr prayer, if anyone leaves, quits, omits, knowingly, intentionally, deliberately, is what is actually meant here, abandons the Asr prayer, it is as though he had been cut off from his family and his property. Do we ever realize? Do we ever realize the time of Asr in marketplace? Azan is being called. The proclaimer announces, proclamations are announced and people keep on going about in the market, in the shops, shopping, window shop, shopping, dying, matching, all forms of worldly activities going on. The customers, the shopkeepers, nobody bunch, nobody budge and the time of Salah passes off. None of them do ever realize that they have been cut off from their family and they've been cut off from their houses. Little do people know and little do people believe. In all the designer shops, 
in all the tuition centers, in all the beauty parlors, in all the get-togethers, the time of a sort comes and it passes off. And people just don't realize that not, not offering or omitting it intentionally or deliberately is going to cut off them, cut all of them off from their families, as if their families were being looted and plundered. Salah is so very important that offering Salah intentionally and with full sincerity to please Allah, even if this is not complete, what happens, Hazrat Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Ibn Majah that Prophet Sallallahu was talking about the Antichrist, Masih Dajjal. And then he said, Shouldn't I tell you something which is even more dangerous than the faction of Dajjal? The companion said, please sure do. Prophet Sallallahu said, concealed polytheism. It is more dangerous, even more dangerous than all the factions of Dajjal. And he was asked, what do you mean by concealed polytheism? He said, it is a condition. It is a deed that when a person stands for prayer, he just prolongs his prayer due to the fact that he knows that somebody is watching him. Hazrat Shaddad bin Osroz, who reports in Musa Ahmad, the Prophet said, whoever prayed with the intention to show off committed polytheism, who fasted to show off committed polytheism, and who did charity to show off committed polytheism. So for prayer, the person has to be sincerely desiring to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, the same salah will turn into polytheism, an act of polytheism, finding partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how important salah is, I just narrated a few words of the Prophet sallallahu But remember that all the stages of salah, how excellent this worship of Allah is for the believer. What are the merits of the person who prays? And what is the excellence of the believer who offers salah? Remember all the stages of salah. All the stages of salah, they are all a source of immense reward. They are all a source of a huge, immense reward, forgiveness, bounties and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Starting from the proclamation and azan of the salah till the end. The supplications after the salah, starting from azan till the end of salah. All the steps of salah are rewarding a source of forgiveness a cause of being blessed with the blessings and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like Azan, the proclamation, Hazrat Jabir radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Muslim, that when the words of Azan are called out, the shaitan goes away till Roha. This was a very, this was a place which was very far off from Medina. So, saying of azan and listening of azan and repeating the words of azan or the proclamation are going to save us or save us all from the harmful effects of shaitan and prophet sallallahu promised re regarding this proclamation of the salah the prophet sallallahu said that any person any believers who answers the words of the proclamation that is he repeats exactly what the proclaimer said the person who is a believer and with every azan he repeats the words as they were said or as they were called out and then after the completion of the azan he recites the rood and then he supplicates with the dua for the prophet sallallahu which has been taught by the prophet sallallahu himself then Prophet said that for a person who does all this, his intercession will be obligatory for me. 
So Prophet Sallallahu on the day of judgment holds the intercession of the person obligatory for himself, for a person who is answering the azan and reciting the rood and reciting the words of the supplication taught to us by the Prophet Sallallahu This is Salah. We haven't even yet started Salah. It is just only up till the proclamation that we've been offered all these rewards. And Prophet Sallallahu has also told all of us that all the prayers and all the supplications which are made between the proclamation and the azan and the ikama, they are heard and they are answered. And after the azan or the proclamation, the next step, which all people who are going to offer the salah, the next step is performing wudu. And in one of our previous sessions, I in detail talked about the excellence of performing wudu, but repeating again that what is the importance of wudu and what it leads to. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Bukhari and Muslim that Prophet sallallahu was within his companions and he asked them that if there was a river at the door of one of your houses and he go down into the river and he washed himself five times a day, would there be any filthiness remaining on his body? The companions agreed and they said that obviously no filth would obviously remain on the body of the person who would, who would get down and take a bath or a dip in the river five times a day. And then Prophet added, that is like the five times of prayer by Allah which obliterate the sins of the believers. And it is because of what? It is because of the wudu of the salah. In a detailed narration, the Prophet ﷺ has explained us, as we've discussed previously also, that Prophet ﷺ has clearly announced that wudu is a cause of obliteration of all the sins of the washed paths of the body which we wash by the water of the wudu. The Prophet ﷺ said that when the believer washes his hands, then the sins which were committed by the hands, even under the nails, they are forgiven. When the person washes his face, all the cleans his mouth, then sins of his mouth, of his tongue, of his face, even under the eyelashes, they are washed off and they are all forgiven. And then when he washes his, his feet and then he rubs his hand over his hair, then all the sins of these exposed body parts, which are in fact the parts of the body with one, with all of these, we we sin in any case. So all the sins are obliterated because of this wuzu. And similarly, it is wuzu, which is a cause of raising the ranks of the salah also. And then after wuzu, the person walks to the mosque. And what reward has been promised to the person walking to the mosque or going to the mosque? As Salman radiallahu ta'ala who reports that Prophet sallallahu said, he who performs ablution in the best way and then comes to the mosque for prayer is the visitor of Allah and it is incumbent on the host to regard his visitor. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor his visitor. The visitor is he who has done wuzu and is walking to the mosque he is the visitor of Allah and Allah is going to regard him and Allah is going to honor him. And how does Allah honor his visitor is by forgiving his sins, by forgiving his sins. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Bukhari that Prophet said, Allah arrange hospitality. Allah arranges hospitality for the person who attends the mosque in the morning and in the evening. So the person who is going morning, evening, day, in and out, he's going to the mosque, Allah arranges hospitality in where? In Jannah. Hazrat Abdullah bin Amr ta'ala who reports, one who comes to the mosque to perform prayer with the congregation, a sin is pardoned and a good act is recorded in the record of his deeds 
at every step on coming to the mosque and also going back to his home. <coughs> so each step this person takes on his path to the mosque, on each step a sin will be pardoned and a good deed will be recorded. Similarly, another hadith. Hazrat Uqba bin Amr ta'ala, who reports in Muslim that Prophet said that whenever a person after performing his wuzu at homes comes to the mosque with an intention of prayer, both the writer angels or the one which writes the good deeds writes 10 good deeds in his record. And that who sits in the mosque waiting for the next prayer, the angels write down his name in the list of the pious and the obedient people. And he is reputed as praying from the time of coming to the mosque till the time of going back to his home. So the whole of the period where he is going to, he enters the mosque before the congregational prayer starts and he sits down and he waits and then he offers a prayer and then after that he sits there praising Allah or making any supplication the whole period he will be rewarded as the reward of offering salah how important it is Hazrat Abu Musa Ashri radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari that Prophet said that one who comes in the mosque from a long distance to offer prayer will get more reward than the one who comes from a shorter distance. The longer you walk, the more time you put in, the more effort you put in. And doesn't mean that you actually have to walk by foot. If you have a car, you can go by car. And there you will be rewarded for the fuel you're going to spend and for the, for the car you're going to use. In any case, it's going to be rewarded. And how, how excellent this prayer in the mosque is. Hazrat Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and who reports in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet said to offer praise with the congregation. To offer salah or prayers with the congregation in the mosque is 27 times more rewarding than the offer alone at home. And such a huge promise for a person, Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala and who narrates in Turimzi, the Prophet promised that whoever offers every salah for 40 days like this, that even the first takbir is not missed by him, then he will be, then he will be ordered to be freed from the hellfire. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, they all have reported so many ahadiths by the Prophet sallallahu narrating that for each step there will be 10, 10 good deeds rewarded. For each step there will be 10 sins forgiven. For each step there will be 10 bounties and blessings rewarded. And for each step there will be raising by 10 grades or 10 ranks of the believer. Hazrat Abu Umama radiallahu ta'ala who reports in Abu Dawud that Prophet said one who performs wudu at home and comes to the mosque to offer obligatory prayer with the congregation will get the reward of a person who wears ihram who wears ihram and if he waits for the time of the next prayer without indulging in a nonsense and a foul conversation, his act will be entered in illiyim. Subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. Angels bear witness to the people who attend the mosque for the prayers of Fajr and Asr. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Muslim the Prophet said that the angels of the night and day, they watch around you and they gather in the prayers of Fajr and Asr. And then the angels who spend the night, the angels who were to look after the issues and the matters of the night, the angels who spend the night with you when they ascend the skies at the time of Fajr, they reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah asks them, in what condition did you leave my bondsmen? They say, when we left them, they were offering Fajr. And we went to them, they were offering Asr. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. O Allah, make our houses as those lucky houses that the witnesses 
the angels give in the heavens are that Allah we went to their houses and all all of them the men the women the children they were all awake they had done their wudu the men had left for the mosques and the mothers and the children they were all busy offering their salah and the men had come back the mothers with their children they had opened all the scriptures of quran and they were reciting the quran and the men folk also returned from the mosques and they were also they also opened their quran and they started reciting and they, they started reading the quran allah make our houses one of those lucky houses rabbi ja'alni maqima as-salati wa min zurriyati and the person when offer zakat allah is so very pleased with him how pleased allah is hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in ibn majah the prophet as him said as long as a man remains present in the mosque to offer the salah and he praises allah allah gets pleased with him just as just as the family members of a lost man feel at his recovery Allah feels as happy as if a lost family member comes back to the family. And then not only that, Allah guarantees for the man who attends the mosque. Hazrat Abu Imam Bakhli radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Abu Daud the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Three men are under the guarantee of Allah." Three men are under the guarantees of Allah. Number 1, who set out to fight in the path of Allah if he dies in a battle Allah will enter him into paradise number 2 one who sets out from his house to offer prayer in the mosque if he dies Allah will enter him into the paradise and if he returns to his home safe he will reward him and one who enters his house and says assalamu alaikum is also under the guarantee of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So how much Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala likes likes the believer to be in a state of salah and to be and to be attending the mosque the person who walks to the mosque for the prayer he keeps his deen he keeps his religion secure as the Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in Abu Daud the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that whoever performs wuzu with perfection goes to the mask sees that people have offered the prayer with congregation allah blesses him with a reward equal to those who have offered the prayer with congregation without making deduction in their rewards he had intention of getting the congregation but he could not so even then because of his intention he will be rewarded with that reward and then a person who sits in the mosque and waits till the next mosque till the next prayer of the salah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will again forgive all his sins before he returns to his house and then a person has a abu uh, abu darda radiyallahu ta'ala who reports the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that person who spends most of his time in the mosque allah guarantees for him his benevolence his mercy and an unshaky tread over the bridge of sara subhanallah subhanallah allahumma ja'alna minhum allahumma ja'alna minhum allahumma ja'alna minhum rabbi ja'alni maqima as-salati wa min zurriyati how salah from one salah to the other salah all sins are forgiven hazrat abu zar ghafari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrated in mustad ahmad that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there was a uh, cold weather and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went out and he was looking at the leaves of the trees which were falling because it was autumn and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got hold of the two branches of the tree and he was shaking them and the leaves they began to feel, uh, fall down and then he addressed hazrat abu zar ghafari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and told him that when a person offers prayers solely for the sake of allah 
When a person offers prayers solely for the sake of Allah, his sins fall away like these leaves of the tree. <coughs> Similarly, Hazrat Usman who reports in Muslim that Prophet said that a Muslim who performs wudu properly for his first salah, when the time for the salah comes, and then he offers it with humbleness, a proper raku, a beautiful sajda, or a prostration, then the prayer will become free from all his previous sins. All the sins from one salah to other salah will be forgiven. This is the merit of salah. Not only is this, but salah is an excellent source of training of a believer also. Salah trains a believer to be an actual and a true Muslim. It teaches us punctuality. It teaches us purity. Salah trains us to adopt the Islamic dress code. Salah teaches us and trains us to leave our homes and to walk in the path of Allah for the sake of Allah. So it is actually a training for immigration for the sake of Allah. It is a training for jihad in the path of Allah. Salah teaches us discipline. Salah teaches us the concept of equality. There is no concept of color, creed, race, no discrimination. This is a training by Salah. It removes kibur, arrogance from the heart of the believer. Salah trains the believer to be humble. It teaches us humbleness. It teaches us the concept of Muslim brotherhood and fraternity. It promotes Muslim brotherhood and fraternity. And then it provides all the Muslims a chance to inquire about each other and the chance to help out each other. This is, this is all the chance a Muslim who is going to the mosque, he, he has all these chances to do all that. And not only this, not only is this that what I've talked is that all the steps of Salah are rewarding and forgiving and a source of bounties and blessings of Allah and that Salah is one of the most wonderful worships which gives us one of the most remarkable trainings as a believer. Now next we need to realize is which is equally important that all the stages and all the steps in the journey of life hereafter, Salah is going to be the primary deed which is going to be helpful in our hereafter. All the stages in hereafter, Salah is going to be the first deed which is going to help us, support us, guide us and is going to be a cause of salvation hereafter. Like a person who offers Salah not only offers but establishes Salah, his death will be easy. His death will be easy. It will be easy for the soul to depart. And then after the death, the crisis and the difficulties, the tightnesses and the darknesses in the grave, Salah, Salah will make all this easy. Like what? When the person, when the deceased body will be placed in the grave. We went through all these words of the Prophet Sallallahu when I was talking about the conditions in the grave and the torments of the grave. When the Munkir and the Nakir are going to come, the two angels are going to come. They're going to make the person sit up and the person is going to be asked three questions man rabbuka man rasuluka man dinuka these three questions when the person will be asked you know what prophet ﷺ has told us in a hadith prophet ﷺ said 
that the person when he will be made to sit up and the munkir and nakir will be asked will be asking these three questions then the person who was a believer the person who had established salah in his life he will be shown the sun as if it is setting that is what that he will be shown that the sun is setting at the time of the asr salah is passing away this person who used to establish salah who never used to delay postpone salah and who never used to omit salah you know what the honor of this person will be in this grave with two new strange and with with such horrible faces and with such horrible voices these two munkir and nakir sitting and asking these questions you know what will be the confidence of this person who used to establish salah he will he will wave them off with his hands and he will tell them get away let me let me offer my salah officer and they will ask him to sit back and answer answer their questions first and he will say get away let me answer let me let me offer my salah this will be the position and this will be the prestigious position of the person who offered salah during his life just imagine he has no conf- he has no fear he has no stress in this darkness in this solitude of the grave with these two strange angels in front of him he will be fully confident no stress no fear no tension no anxieties this is what quran says wala khawfun alayhim wala hum yaqzanun they will have no fears they will have no distresses they will have no tensions they will have no crises upsetting them this is salah which will keep them and give them all the confidence in the world at that time of questions and you know when in the grave the angels of punishment those deaf and dumb and blind angels with hammers and maces who are going to strike the person between their two ears on their foreheads when they're going to come with intention of punishment with orders of punishment and they will proceed from the right side what will stop them it will be salah the prayers of the person are going to stand up and they will say there's no way from this side and then these angels will come from the foot end and again the steps of the person the person who had taken steps towards the mass for the congregational salah these deeds will stand up these steps will stand up and they will stop these punishing angels and said no way from this side so from two sides will be protecting the salah and the congregational salah rabbi ja'alni maqima salati wa min zurriyati and then after the day after the grave the next the next position the next place in the hereafter is the day of resurrection the day of judgment what will happen for the people who establish salah hazrat abdullah bin amr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports in musnad ahmad that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that person who performs salah for the person who performs and establish salah on the day of resurrection there will be light for him there will be light there will be salvation and there will be forgiveness for him but anyone who does not keep to it that is who does not establish salah there will be no light for him no evidence or salvation for him and on the day of resurrection he will be held with karun with Firaun with Haman and Ubay bin Khauf Allahumma la taj'alna minhum such bad companions will be the companions of the person who does not who does not offer salah these will be the companions on the day of resurrection and then on the day of resurrection the person who who used to who used to proclaim who used to say azan for the salah hazrat muawiya radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports that in bukha in muslim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the proclaimer the muazzin 
will have the longest necks on the day of resurrection they will stand out far away people will be able to recognize them they are the proclaimers of the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these will be they will receive intercession from so many i'll be talking about that in future in just in a few words and then on the day of judgment the people who used to perform wudu they will be recognized by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam companions asked companions asked the holy prophet that there are going to be so many people on the day of judgment on the grounds of the day of judgment how will you recognize us in bukhari prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told muhajjilina min athar al wuzu i will recognize you from the glowing parts of the parts of the body which you washed with the water of the wudu and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever wants to increase the glow may increase it may do so so the people who washed their parts of the body as ordered by quran and sunna the parts of the body will be glowing they will be shining they will be all brightly lit up and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will recognize them and then prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be giving them the water of the river of kafir and he will be interceding for them after recognizing them and then on the day of judgment what about the shade what about the shade prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us very clearly that there will be no shade other than the shade of the throne of allah azza wa jal and as abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala who reports in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah will provide the shade of his throne to seven people seven people will be allowed and permitted to enter the shade of the throne of allah azza wa jal number 1 the just ruler a young person who spent his youth in the worship of allah and a person whose heart is attached to the mosque his soul clings to the mosque he is attached to the mosque and two men or two women who love each other purely for the cause of allah for the pleasure of allah and the fifth is a person who was allured by a beautiful woman of a high rank and she offered or invited him for committing adultery and he refused saying i fear allah and a person who pays charity in the path of allah so secretly that even his left hand does not know what the right hand has spent and the person who remembers allah in seclusion and shed tears for the fear of allah so salah it is going to be two reasons for for be for being permitted in the throne of allah two points are related to salah and after being permitted in the shade of the throne of allah the next stage is of accountability hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala and who reports in tirmidhi that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that on the day of judgment player prayer or salah will be the first deed with the person will be accounted for the first question the first question regarding the rights of allah the first question regarding the rights of allah with the people will be asked well will be what will be about the salah and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then said that if the salah will be found correct that is it will be in accordance with the method prescribed by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then the man will be declared successful and if not then he will be declared unsuccessful and then if the obligatory prayers will short will be falling short then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say are there any supererogatory deeds in his accounts and if there will be any then these supererogatory salah or deeds will serve to make up the deficiency of his obligatory salah and so this person will have what will have easy accountability when 
and why the person will have easy accountability just because his salah was in accordance to the method taught by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so salah will be the first cause of easy accountability of the bondsman and then after accountability intercession it will be the wudu which will be a cause of recognition by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is going to be the chief chief person doing intercession on the day of judgment and then intercession for the muazzins intercession for the proclaimers hazrat abu sayyid khudri radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in bukhari that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that within the range of the proclaimer of salah the muazzin of the salah's voice whoever hears him men jinn or anything shall testify on in, on his behalf on the day of resurrection all these things to which the voice of the proclaimer reaches they will all testify they will all bear witness and they will all intercede for him Hazrat Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه reports in Tirmidhi Abu Dawood and Ibn Majah the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said freedom from the fire of hell will be written down for the bondsman who called azan for 7 years for the sake of Allah and the person who used to call the azan will be will be resurrected on the day of azan or uh, resurrected on the day of resurrection and he will be calling out azan and then after the accountability the next stage is the bridge of sirat how is salah going to help us all on the bridge of salah hazrat abu darda radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu hazrat abu huraira radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in multiple words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they all narrate hazrat anas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in ibn majah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said a glad tiding of perfect light is for those a glad tiding of perfect light is for those who walk to the mosques in darknesses of night to offer the prayers so the people walking in the darkness of the night may it be the isha prayers or may it be the fajr prayers they have been promised as a perfect light on the bridge of salah on the bridge of sirat which is going to be as thin as fine as hair and is going to be as sharp as the cutting edge of the sword and people will have to walk over it and obviously light will be needed and the light will be what salah will be the light walking to the mosque at the night darkness of the night will be the light Hazrat Abu Darda radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu reports I repeat again this these words of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that who spends most of his time in the mosque Allah guarantees his benevolence his mercy and unshaky tread over the bridge of sirat so it is going to be all about the congregational prayers and it is all about salah which is made which is going to make the passage of the treading on the bridge of sirat easy and which is going to be the source of perfection of the light on the bridge and then when the people are going to pass this bridge of sirat and they going to come close to jannah then the key to jannah the key to jannah miftahul jannah is going to be what is again going to be salah and when they're going to be in jannah allah in more than one verses which i have already narrated in the previous sessions allah says you hallawna asabira min adh-dhahabi wal fizzati in jannah they will be adorned with the ornaments of gold and silver till where and why the parts of the body they used to wash during wudu they will be adorned with the they will be adorned with the bracelets and with the jewelries of gold and silver till where the water of the wudu used to reach and remember people of the hell people of the hell surah mudassir verse 43 allah asks 
Allah says, Allah tells that the people of the hell will be asked, what got you into hell? What got you into hell? What did you do? Or what didn't you do? What got you into hell? The answer of the people of hell would be, they will say, they will answer this question. They will answer, we were not among those who established Salah. Salah, it is my daughters. Salah, it is my sisters. There's nothing without Salah. Nowhere will we get without Salah. They will say, the dwellers of the hell will say that we got to we got to this hell. Why? Because we were not among those who established Salah. That is why Allah orders in Surah Tuha, verse number 132. Wa'mur ahlaka alayha. Order your family. Order your family members to offer salah. This is why Allah has said, Ku anfusukum wa ahlikum nara, save your own souls and save your body and save your save your family members and near and dear ones from the fire of hell. And this we can do how? Wa mur ahlaka bis salat, order your family members to offer salah. And preserve it yourself. Stay steadfast in establishing salah yourself. That is why Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam in Surah Ibrahim verse 40 made the supplication and this supplication has been placed in our salah. Rabbi ja'alni waqeem as salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbana taqabbal dua. Rabbi ja'alni waqeem as salati wa min zuriyati. Rabbi ja'alni waqeem as salati wa min zuriyati. O our sustainer, Cause us and our offsprings to remain constant in Salah. These were the words of the prayer and of the dua Hazrat Ibrahim salam made. Allah, oh Allah, help us all, help us all establish Salah. Accept from us our prayers. Help us focus and concentrate in our Salah. Make Salah a coolness of our eyes, of our eyes and a contentment of our soul. Allah, make us one of those who start enjoying their Salah. Make us develop the feeling that, that our Salah is a meeting with our Creator, is our meeting with our Sustainer, is our meeting with our Merciful Allah. Rabbi Jalni Maqima Salati wa Min Zuriyati. Rabbi Jalni Maqima Salati wa Min Zuriyati. Rabbana la tuze qulubana. Bada is hadaytana wa hablana milatun ka rahma. Inna ka antul wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu alayk Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin summa amin